a conversation between a travel agent and a customer. The customer wants to book a coach ticket. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 7. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully. Good morning. I'd like to book a coach to London. I was hoping you had something available this Saturday afternoon. Good morning, sir. Take a seat and I'll just check for you. Uh, yes. We still have several free seats for Saturday. Where will you be leaving from? There are three pick-up points in town, Main Street, Centenary Square or the Central Bus Station. From Centenary Square, please. That's easier for me to get to than the bus station. And what time would you like to leave? There are coaches on the hour every hour, from 12 through till 6pm. Well, I'm meeting someone at the station in London and I need to be there for 4.30. So, which one would you recommend? Hmm. Well, there's one leaving at 1 that arrives at Victoria Station at 4.10, if that's any good. Traffic is usually quite light at the weekend and the drivers tend to make good time, so I think you'd certainly be there for 4.30. OK. That sounds just right. I think I'll take that. I can always phone ahead if I'm going to be late. And when are you returning, sir? Actually, I'm not sure when I'll be coming back, so I won't book a return ticket, just one way. I can always book you an open return if you'd like. You can use this at any time within the next month, as long as you contact us first to reserve a seat. Well, there's a chance I might be getting a lift back, you see. So I'll just pay for one way. I don't want to buy a return if I don't need it. OK, no problem. Are you travelling alone? Just the one ticket, please. I'm going down to visit my daughter at university. My son's meeting me at the station, so it's a proper family reunion. Very nice. OK, well, I can book that for you if you like, sir. That'll be £23.50. Now, I just need to take down some details. Can I have your name, please? Yes, it's Matthew Upton. That's U-P-T-O-N. And your address? 34 Allersley Road. Allersley. That's A-L-L-E-S-L-E-Y. And your telephone number? 01732 558 997. And your email address. We'll use this to send confirmation of your travel details. Matt257 at yahoo.co.uk OK, thanks. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 8 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 8 to 10. Before I forget, I'll be taking a little luggage. Is there a set luggage allowance? We offer a very good luggage allowance. You can take two suitcases as long as they're no more than 20 kilos each. That's 40 kilos in total and one small item of hand luggage on the coach. Most people find that more than adequate. Any additional items carry an extra charge of £10 for each bag. I certainly won't be taking that much, so I should be OK. I was worried I might be taking too much. 
Would you like travel insurance included with your ticket? It's an additional £2. No, I don't think so. No problem. It's not compulsory. OK. How will you be paying? Actually, I've been having trouble with my debit card today and I've left my chequebook at home, so I'd better pay in cash. You'll give me a receipt, won't you? Certainly, and we'll send confirmation to your email address as well. So that's £23.50, sir. If you just wait a minute, I'll print you off a receipt. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You are going to hear a talk on ginseng. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. Now listen to the tape and answer the questions. Good morning. Today we'd like to talk with Mr. Schumacher of Kaiser Farms. Mr. Schumacher, what is in ginseng that makes it so special? Thanks. The key elements in ginseng are the active ingredients known as ginseng osides. All true ginseng products on the market contain a certain percentage of ginsenosides and a number of factors determine how much. The age of Wisconsin ginseng when harvested plays a major role in determining the natural level of ginsenosides. Tests have shown that the older the plant, the higher the ginsenoside content. Five-year-old Wisconsin ginseng plants have had ginsenoside levels as high as 20%. As a family operation, one of our strategies in producing the highest quality product available is to only harvest four- and five-year-old roots. The majority of Wisconsin ginseng harvested is three years old. The reason for this is that the expenses to care for and the possibility of disease increase as the plants become older. By limiting the amount of ginseng that we plant each year, we are able to provide the necessary attention and care to produce the highest quality four- and five-year-old roots. Now look at questions 15 to 20. As the talk continues, answer questions 15 to 20. What is Wisconsin ginseng used for? There are two real species of ginseng on the market today, Panax, Korean or Chinese, and Panax, Quinquefolius, Wisconsin. Since ginseng has been used for thousands of years in China, it is easiest to explain the differences in ginseng by using traditional Chinese herbal philosophy. Wisconsin ginseng is considered a cooling type herb and Korean or Chinese ginseng are considered heating type herbs. As a cooling herb, Wisconsin ginseng is used as a preventative medicine. Here in the United States, Wisconsin ginseng is considered an adaptogen. As an adaptogen, Wisconsin ginseng acts to normalize body functions and strengthen the immune system and other systems in the body. 
Over a longer period of time, it builds up energy and maintains the body at a higher level, acting to reduce stress and fatigue. As a heating herb, Panax ginseng is used more as a stimulant and is often prescribed in China when the body is recovering from an illness and is worn down and in need of a rapid boost of energy. It is only recommended to be taken over short periods of time and not continuously. Wisconsin ginseng is considered the premier ginseng in China because it can be taken on a continuous basis and acts as a preventative type medicine by slowly building up the body. Wisconsin ginseng fits in perfectly with the Chinese herbal philosophy of preventative type medicine. Unlike here in the US, where we often wait until we are ill to seek medical attention, the traditional Chinese medicinal philosophy concentrates on building up the body to prevent illness. Based on the way Wisconsin ginseng has been prescribed in China, it is the correct ginseng to be taken for the majority of the consumers. Travel to China and see firsthand the ginseng that is considered the world's finest ginseng. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation between a student, Kayana, and a professor about an assignment. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 27. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 27. Hi, Dr. Reed. Are you busy right now? Do you mind if I come in for a second? Hey, Kiana. No, I don't mind at all. Thanks. I just wanted to say that I'm enjoying your Urban Studies course and that I'm having some trouble with the first assignment. OK, no problem. What do you want to ask? This is my first time writing a paper of this length. All right. What sort of trouble are you running into? Well, writing more than 10 pages is actually turning out to be quite a task. I've been rereading some of the material, and I'm just not sure how to approach the assignment. Yes, it takes some time to get used to academic writing assignments. More time than I expected, really. I also want to do a really good job on the assignment. I don't want to put a half-hearted effort into it. I'm glad to hear that. I'll say that these assignments get easier to manage as time goes on. That's a small relief. I mean, it gets easier to plan the assignment and to organize one's time, but it still takes hard work and a sincere effort to produce a good piece of academic writing. My role is to guide you to the readings I think are the most relevant and to give you tips on managing your time. OK. Could we talk about the readings then? Sure. We can go over them. I guess I want to ask about the Cole House text first. It seems like a pretty interesting book. But sometimes a bit over the top, no? I would recommend reading just the first part of the book. It's the most relevant to the assignment that I gave you. The rest of the text goes on about a topic we will cover later in the semester. All right. I'll just read the intro then. As for the Peely article, oh, did you read that one? Yes, I accessed it online and then printed it out. OK. I would recommend you review that again. Also, remember what I said about the Liebskid article? I think you told the class to focus on the research methods, right? Yes. She approaches the problem in an innovative way. Let's see. For the Gary article, I think you should... Let me see. I think it would be best for you to read just the conclusion. Just the conclusion. I see. Yes. I would ask you to read the whole thing, but this way would be more efficient. 
Speaking of which, you should not bother reading the Wolfson article. Yeah, it didn't seem particularly relevant to the topic. Let's see. Any other reading you wanted to talk about? Let me see. Um, yes, the Cuddler article. What do you think of that one? Ah, yes. How could I forget? That one is pretty central to the topic. I really think you must go over it again. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 28 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 28 to 30. All right. Is there anything else you wanted to ask about? Yes, I wanted to ask about the line graph that you provided. It seems that the legend identifying the different parts is not there. Ah, it must not have been photocopied correctly. Here, let me explain them. They all represent percentages of the population in Manassas, OK? Line 1 here at the top is the percentage of people who were born in a foreign country. Born outside the country. OK, and this one? The next line down, line 2 refers to the percentage of people with citizenship. All right, got it. Those making a middle class wage are represented by the fifth line down. OK, middle class wage earners. And the line number 4? That is the percentage of people with a college education or higher. All right, and the one in the middle? That one is the percentage of population who are married and have children. Got it. Thank you so much, Dr. Reed. I really appreciate your help. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a talk on Canada. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good morning and welcome to this talk on Canada. Many people think of Canada as a land of ice and snow. They think of it as a young country with few inhabitants, a country of English-speaking white people. While some of this is true, it is also an inaccurate description of the country we call Canada. Canada lies in the northern half of the continent of North America. The most northern parts of Canada are sometimes called the land of the midnight sun because at certain times of the year the sun never sets and is still shining faintly at midnight. This northern part of Canada is cold and mostly snow-covered all year round. Most of the people who live in this northern part of Canada are called Inuit or Dene. They were once called Eskimos. They are the original people of this land and are part of what are called the First Nation. As we move to the more southern parts of Canada, the land changes and so does the people. 
Moving from east to west in southern Canada, we travel from the Atlantic provinces of Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, New Brunswick, and Prince Edward Island. These small provinces with small populations border on the Atlantic Ocean. The land in these provinces is not very fertile, so fishing, forestry, and mining are the main industries. Although in some small areas, agriculture is also important. If we travel west from the Atlantic provinces, we come to central Canada, composed of the large provinces of Quebec and Ontario. Both provinces are rich in natural resources, have fertile land, and are the centers of industry for Canada's largest cities. Toronto and Montreal are found in these provinces. The province of Quebec is the center of French language and culture in Canada. In fact, Montreal is the second largest French-speaking city in the world after Paris. Finally, in the far west of Canada. We come to the province of British Columbia. This province is separated from the prairies by the Rocky Mountains and is bounded on the west by the Pacific Ocean. British Columbia is often called simply the West Coast. British Columbia is an attractive place for tourists because of its mild climate, spectacular mountains, sea coast, and beautiful forests. Agriculture, forestry. Shipping and fishing are major industries in British Columbia. The people of this land of Canada are as varied as its landscape. The original settlers, those we call the people of the First Nations, came from Asia by crossing the Bering Strait from Siberia to Alaska. In their new environment, they developed many new languages and cultures. In the 16th century, the first Europeans arrived in eastern Canada. They came from Britain and France. By making treaties with the original inhabitants, they gradually established colonies in eastern and central Canada. After a war with France, Britain took over the French colonies in Quebec and eastern Canada. By the end of the 18th century, all of Canada was under British rule. From this time until the present century, most of the immigrants to Canada were British. Scottish and Irish. In this century, however, Canada has had an influence of settlers from all over the world. There are now hundreds of thousands of people from Asia, Africa, and South America who now call Canada their home. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.